everyone, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Happy Wednesday, everyone, and brr, chilly almost anywhere in the States today. Thank you all so much for joining us. We are Living Felt based in Central Texas where it's about to get real darn chilly overnight, and today we are wet felting what we call our paper thin artful felt fabric. So if you felted with us in the last couple of years, we introduced you to just felting a beautiful piece of artful felt fabric. We've used it in a few projects and today we're just gonna take it one level thinner. So if you're a beginner at wet felting or you haven't even tried it yet, this is such a great project to do. So we're gonna break it down, supplies, the most basic that you need, fibers and everything, and I look forward to sharing that with you. Um, okay, so today, this is an interactive show. If you're new, say I'm new so our friends can welcome you. Everything's happening over there in the chat. If you're with us live, if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. Comment down below because we always give away prizes for both live chat and the comments after the live feed. So on that note, I wanna give away two prizes right now. Last week we had the lovely June Yamaguchi came and introduced us to her singing dolls and the pajama girls, which now live here uh, in the shop. And so many of you fell in love with June and her dolls. Her class is gonna be 30 to, I mean, uh, 60 days out or so. Um, but the prize winners are Becky Ollinger and Jamie Elliott. Congratulations. Thank you so much for your comments. You win uh, the skin tone dabble plus the little goodies that we gave away last week. So um, you can reach us on the contact us page if you want to. So we're gonna be wet felting today and the fairies of course are all lined up with a host of goodies to share with you that either we're going to be using today or you might consider for your own projects at whatever level you're at. And the first up is the lovely and funny fairy Angela. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Hi y'all. I'm gonna serve you up some new packs that we got here today. <laughs> Um, so these are called our wet felting activity packs. Um, each pack will come with three different colors of merino top, um, pre-felt, and some luster fibers. And the, there's three different color tones. So there's um, cool tones, hot tones, and love tones, which Marie will be using in two days uh, video. So go get some. <laughs> and up next is the lovely fairy Alyssa. Woo! So in that wet felting activity pack, we do include a 1 8 yard size of pre-felt. We do also offer it in larger sizes and a variety of fun colors that you can pick from. It is located under the wool tab of our website and if you want the same pre-felt that Marie is using today, make sure you get the PFM. Up next is Fairy Anne. Yay! Hey y'all. So we've got some fiber, but now we need some tools. So for today's project, you are gonna need a towel or dish towel, depending on, on the size. You're gonna need a sponge or, or something to, some water collection device, sponge or ball bras. You need some mesh fabric for the beginning, two layers of thin plastic sheeting, bubble wrap or I'll switch hands so I'm not blocking it for you, a, a bamboo mat for later on at the end. And if you still need to stock your studio with tools, uh, we have a wonderful new tools bundle. It's called the Wet Felting Tools Starter Set. It is going to come with the mesh, the thin plastic sheeting, the bamboo mat, bubble wrap, and some fabric ties for rolling. Thank y'all so much. Up next is Fairy Kayla. Woo! Hey everybody, hope you're staying warm out there. I wanted to share one of my favorite packs. This is like the big sister to the, uh, the pack that Angela was just showing. This is our specialty designer pack. This one is Fairy Hollow. It comes with merino tops, silk blends, uh, comes with a little piece of pre-felt in here and one of every luster fiber that we have. So it's a great kind of next step up from that kit. And uh, I can't remember if I said this is very hollow, but if I did, it's very hollow. <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of fairies, I had a question for everybody today. Do you guys know what you call a fairy that refuses to shower? What do you <laughs> call a fairy that refuses to shower? Stinker Bell. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, Marie, I'll turn it back over to you. To you. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. <laughs> see a big round of hearts for all of the fairies they make everything that we sell they've been scurrying around to put together our wet felting activity packs and our new uh, wet felting tools starter kit which we're very excited about so if it's a toe in the water like if you've never wet felted before you can grab um, the activity pack of your choice and you can get the wet felting starter tool set and be up and running with exactly what we're going to do today. So I am going to use, oh, I'm gonna use this one from uh, that Angela sh showed. And I wanna tell you just quickly that the wet felting tools kit is gonna come with an insert. And in the insert, we're gonna run down for you how to set up your workstation the same way I'm going to show you today. It will say how to use each item that's in the toolkit, and then also suggest what else you need. But lastly on there, you're gonna get a link and or a QR code that you can jump to wet felting activities that you can use with just a basic, what we call a single station setup. So a small project like we're making today. And then in the new activity packs, we list for you the different types of fiber. It doesn't say per color, uh, but it gives you the different types of fiber so you can start to recognize them. And it tells you just a little bit of a description about them. And it also gives you a link uh, to more of our wet felting videos. So that, that will be included in any of the packs, uh, the activity packs that we use for today. So this is the one I'm going to be working with. It is called Love Notes. So when we start wet felting, one of the first things you wanna do is pull your fibers together. Today we're going to be working with pre-felt, merino tops, and then some embellishment fibers. We have in these packs two types of viscose, so if you get this pack, try and notice that two of the shiny fibers feel very silky in your hand and very soft, and one of them is going to feel just a little grippy or a little more you're just gonna notice that your fingers don't slide across it so much. This is the Tuss of Silk, and this is the Viscose. And then you can see how it looks on your project. And then these are wool neps, which are little felted bits. Now, this is the fabric, the full-size fabric that you can make with this activity pack. And you can actually make two of these with this activity pack. So we're gonna make it very, very thin. You might even have a little bit of fiber left over, but this is what we're going to uh, make today. Actually, we're gonna make half of it in the essence of time, okay? So this is what we're doing today. I know I'm a little bit close. Um, this is what we're going to make. So let's set up our workstation. Now that we've gathered our fibers, let's set up our workstation. Holly is with me today here in the studio, so she's going to be feeding me your questions and letting me know what you want to know. When I set up my workstation, the first thing I lay out is a grippy mat. You probably often hear me talk about it, and this is just a, a grippy shelf liner. The next thing I like to lay out is my towel, and this becomes my rolling towel. So I always have a full-size towel that I roll in. And this is comes like basically the foundation of our work surface, the grippy mat and the towel. Now, this is something that I haven't necessarily mentioned before, but I like to have a template of the size of project that I'm going to be laying out. In the case of the original of this one, I used this. It is a 15 by 15 inch 15 by 15 inch template, and I just use our thin resist material. It's nice because even if it gets wet, I can always reuse it. So this becomes a 15 by seven and a half, okay? So I'm gonna put that underneath my work surface so I have a guide of how much I lay out. And then I put my nano bubble. So this is part of our work surface and also what we roll in. Then lastly, I am going to put a piece of plastic. And it may seem redundant to have plastic over the bubble, but in the early stages of your project, you'll find that it makes it a lot easier to handle. So that is the, that's just the start for us, is first we set up our basic workstation. Then you want to bring in um, some water, and this is just room temperature water. It doesn't need to be hot. If you're using fabric in your felting, make sure that it isn't hot, so you want it to be room temperature. 
Then I like a wetting device. If you felt with me for a while, you notice I like to use a Bob Ross and a sponge. I'll be using both of those. And then, of course, our olive oil soap, always on hand. And what I like to do to start is I'm just going to put that right in my soap and I'm gonna let it just chill while I set up my workstation. If you start with your water hot, then it will help melt the soap a little bit, but it's not all that important. And then lastly, we have our mesh and a second piece of plastic. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we use those and when, when we trade them out. We Marie, good, Holly? We have a couple questions. Okay, sure. Um, one is, is the bubble up or down? Oh, I use, I work with my bubble up, and I think that's just a personal preference, but I work with my bubble up. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. um, the template that you showed. Um, oh, yes. Is it? Oh, this? I know what it is. Oh, this is just brown paper. <laughs> I used, I chose brown paper because I knew you could see it better, and I just, it's just a piece of paper, so you can use anything that you want. It's, it's going to get wet. That's why I would normally use my resist. Um, and I'll just be taking it out. Uh, the other thing I like about paper is that it doesn't um, it doesn't add any dimension to my layout. Okay. We have a couple of supply questions. Do you oh, want to take okay. those now? Okay, sure. Um, one is, do you have to use pre-felt as the base, or do oh, you want to wait until we get I'm going to answer. Yeah, okay. I'm going to. I will walk you through everything that I've chosen today, so that you understand why I chose what I chose. The other things I would say to add. Um, so I always have a hand towel. Uh, the other things I would say to add is I encourage you to have a scale. Where'd my scale go? I thought I had a scale on the table. I thought you did too. Huh. Oh, I'm buried. It's buried <laughs> under my stuff. I encourage you to use a kitchen scale because you, you, the more you felt, the more you might find that you want to repeat things. And so weighing your project, sometimes I like to weigh my fibers in advance and I like to weigh my project at the end. Those aren't going to be different, but I like to know how much I'm using. So in weighing out my fibers, um, that's how I kind of get to where we are with this project. But I'm going to show you what we're going to do is use, and normally to do that full sheet is I would use half of what's in the kit, but in this case we're going to use a quarter. So you're going to first, first I'm going to divide my supplies completely in half and then actually in half again. So, but these I'm going to set aside. So when we're pulling wool, when you're pulling wool with your hands, let me just show you overhead. If, if the wool won't come apart um, and your hands are far apart, see if there's a twist. If there's a twist, they're not going to want to come apart, which by the way is how yarn is made, <laughs> giving a twist to this fiber. If it won't pull apart, make sure you untwist and your hands are far enough apart that you can just pull it apart. That should be easy. So this is Merino Top Sliver. Some people call it roving, but that's actually a mistake. It's not roving, it's a sliver, and all the fibers are going the same direction. The next thing we want to do is divide these just right in half will be enough for today right in half. Now you could use one color. I tend to like to add a bunch of colors. Um, that's just my style. So you could use just one color if that were your preference. Then um, the pre-felt is a choice. So I'm going to show you today how you can do a thin uh, wet felt fabric like we're doing either using pre-felt or just using the merino. So this is going to be kind of a little bit of a duel. What I'm going to do is cut this, I'm gonna cut it um, to right about here. So we'll make it half this, it would be half of this right here. If you're with me, just, I'm gonna cut it right about here. Now we've used pre-felt before in our artful felt fabric, but here's the difference, is I'm going to split the thickness of this fabric. Oh, and look, it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't. Okay, when we wet felt, we, we're going to create this fabric. We want to create layers of wool so they can migrate together. You can start by just using your merino top. I like to get it all straight so there's no twist. And then grabbing here with my hands, I'm going to pull the fiber so it's nice and thin. You see how thin it is and make a layer with the blunt end at what's going to be the edge. Now the, the base color actually doesn't matter, but what we're doing here is called shingling. Shingling is we're going to put an overlap of edge to edge about a third. If your fiber starts to split, 
just close it up. Close it up and get it, it's, it's okay to fuss with it and align it so that it does what you want. You don't need to alternate the base layer colors, but you can if you want to. So we're gonna lay about half of it out with this type of fiber, the merino top. Again, it's called, it's technically a sliver. And then we're going to overlap here also about a third. And notice that in this case, this end is a little more rounded and this end is a little more straight. And that's how we do our overlaps. So I'm just gonna break this up just for fun. And if, can you remind us what colors you're using? Oh, sure. Um, this is coral, this is a begonia. I hope I don't have those backwards. And this is raspberry. Mm -hmm. And this is, you get all of this in our Love Notes activity pack. I don't think these three come together in any other pack, but they're like Marie colors. <laughs> One of my one of my favorites. Okay, so notice that what we want is pretty much a uniform, even layout. It is very wispy thin, um, but it, the, the key thing is that it feels really even as you put your hands across it. And this is layered number one. Now, if you want something a little faster, you're brand, brand new, you just wanna try the pre-felt, you wanna check it out, you could lay down just the pre-felt, just like this, but if you want it thin, a thin layer like this, so just a supporting base layer, then you're gonna peel it. Now, it may not peel evenly and it may tear on you and don't worry about it. If it does separate unevenly, all you need to do is patch it together like we did the merino top. So, it's, see it like here, it's starting to split. Don't worry about that. We just wanna get, see how it's split and it's not totally even? Don't even worry about it. We're going to patch it all in together. I'll start from this end. And the thing is for the project that we're doing next week, I want the, the felt to be very, very thin. And I'll save this beautiful piece uh, so that you're not afraid of this piece, okay? I don't want you to be afraid of this piece. So what we'll do is we'll take our clean edge, we'll put it down here, and here, where it's all thin, we'll fill that in. So I'll take part of this that's left, and um, we'll just patch in, make it as flat as you can, patch in and lay it down. Where you have a, a, a straight edge, you can feather it out if you want, but it's not gonna make much of a straight edge. Um, it's not going to impact things very much. This little base layer is thinner than you might even imagine. And then we're just going to fill this in here, straighten it all out and fill it in. So again, you could lay down the full thickness. You can peel the half thickness so that you get a nice thin layer. And trust me, on my hands, this feels very level. So here where I have a straight line, if I want to, I can just tease it out and get rid of what looks like a straight line. And anywhere you wanna patch it back in, just take that tiny tuft and plunk her down. So this is our single first layer. You could do it all merino top or you could do half a pre-felt or a full thickness of your pre-felt. And now for the top layer, we want to use our merino top. So we need, for this project, we need two layers of fiber. And now we want to be a little free spirited in how we lay down these colors. When we do two layers, we want them going in opposite directions. A pre felt is like a compressed bat and the fibers are already mixed up. But these fibers are very aligned and going the same direction. So in order to help them all blend together, then what we do is we alternate the layers, one going up and down and one going left and right. And I'm going to patchwork this in for interest. Um, I'm gonna just patchwork it in and mix up how they all go together, just so it looks a little more interesting. We have a few people that are just joining us. Can uh -huh. you just remind everybody what we're making again? Today, we are making what we call our artful felt fabric, but in this case, it is paper thin artful felt fabric. So we're making just two layers of merino. Notice here, this is my cut edge and this is my edge. I am gonna flip this over so that I keep my edge a little more straight. Um, this is a paper thin artful felt fabric. We have laid out a layer of merino top on the top half and a half a thickness of our PFM pre-felt 
for the bottom, just to show that you have different options. To be true, you could even lay a piece of silk fabric down, but we're gonna nano felt uh, together in a similar fashion later in the year. The most important thing here, y'all, is that we're nice and even in our layers. Again, you could do all one color and skip all this mishmash bit that I've got going on. And you can also, you know, take one color and trail it down, make it longer. It doesn't, there are no rules here except you want thin, even, uniform layout as much as possible. So this right here is a practice. Keep this flat, untwisted, and the ability to pull off a very thin layer and have control of it. You don't want, if it feels too thick and clunky, then make these more narrow. Control is your friend here. And the more multiple layers you have, uh, meaning the, the thinner layers you have, the finer felt you're going to make. If your layers are big and chunky, then um, your, the fibers are not gonna go together as nicely. It's a little bit more of a challenge for them. Now, when you wet felt, you could use fine fibers and you can use coarse fibers. Today, we're working with fine fibers. So you could, um, we have a few people asking if you could use MC1 if you wanted to. Yes, you can use MC1, but MC1 doesn't need to be tufted like this. You don't need to lay it out like this. You lay it out um, more like the pre-felt. So if you're going to felt with MC1, uh, peel it into thin layers like we did here with the pre-felt and lay out layers. You can alternate the layers, but you don't need to tough it into little bits. That's the purpose of the batting. So it's like you don't want to ruin the, 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 what's been already laid out for you. The fibers are already beautifully mixed up and you can just alternate some layers. So yes, you can use MC1. And I think our very old wet felting of bookmarks video, we used MC1. Um, which should be on our wet felting activities page. Okay, so look, we have a nice thin layout here. I'm just gonna cover all of my pre-felt. Everything is, and you notice me doing this, I'm feeling, is it even, is it level, is it all nice and uniform? If it's not level somewhere, if you feel like you need more, then you could just go back and add a little piece and fill in wherever you need it. Now, we can go in now, and it looks a little choppy. Anywhere you wanna break up that chop, you can just, toss a little color right on top of that so it doesn't feel like such a square. But we're gonna bring our embellishment fibers in for that purpose. Here they are. These are the embellishment fibers we have chosen. So we have viscose raspberry, viscose violet, tussa silk in marigold, and onion wool neps. And again, these are all in the Love Notes Wet Felting Activity Pack, and you can get to that in today's description, in the link to uh, to today's show in the description. I'm gonna pull off this viscose and I don't want it to look very directional. So I'm going to mix it up like this and I'm just gonna plunk it on. Don't worry about putting same color on top of same color. That's gonna be part of the magic is that you add sheen. The thing that viscose and tussa silk and bamboo top does is it adds sheen and it adds a little bit of texture in the form of squiggles. So don't be shy about that, uh, about putting that on. I really love the orange um, in this pack. It really, you're gonna see that uh, the, these colors come together in such a beautiful way. And I like to add a lot of sheen into this. Now you can add other, other items. You can add silk hankies and um, Sorry, silk waste, you might have hemp or rami, you might have other fibers, bring those in too. Um, whatever it is that you have or you wanna try, these are great little samplers and a great opportunity to test out some other fibers. But if this is your very first one, we want it, your very first felt or something, we want it to give you kind of a surefire success just to making a little piece of fabric. And this fabric is gonna become something else wonderful next week. Mm -hmm. How many layers um, would you say you had before you started adding the embellishment? Fibers? Only two. Only we two. only had two layers. We had two layers. We have up here, we have two layers of merino top, and here we have a layer of merino pre-felt, which is a 19.5 micron merino, and then a layer of merino top. That's it. Two thin layers. So um, what I can do is maybe in a minute weigh my fiber so you see how much did we use. I forgot to weigh it just before. Um, but I will give you a weight next week for sure. 
my, my big pieces that have started out 15 by 15 have been 0.9 and um, one, one ounce exactly with all the embellishments on top. Okay, so I've put a lot of sheen on here, which I love to do, and look how much I, you know, I have left. I have a lot left of the sheen, and then I'm gonna drop some neps in here. Now, neps intimidate some people. Um, what you wanna do is just put a single layer. Don't overdo it, and know that some aren't gonna stick. Neps are just little bits of felted wool, and these are actually, I, I think they might be 19, or some might even be 22 micron, uh, and they're made as part of a, it's like they're a waste product of the fiber production process, but we like them for the bling that they add. Okay, so here we go. Artful felt fabric, a little bit of fiber confetti in, and that's all we're gonna do for the design for, for this project. Now, actually, I, I'm gonna offer you something else. What you can do is add a couple of little cuts of your pre-felt, so I'm gonna take off a little strip of this. The thing about it, though, is you want them, for the, what we're doing next week, the theme is rather small, so I would stay under two inches, like on any anything that I add that's really blatant, so I wouldn't go too large, but you can add a little of your pre-felt right into there. I'm gonna do this. So can they get away? Let's see. Let's see if I can ask this question. Can it, where did it go? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> if they use silk, would you only then need one layer of the merino? Yeah. If you use silk fabric, then you could do one layer of merino. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, look, here we are. Our project is all wet out. If you're happy, I mean, it's all laid out. That's a very important step, laying out your fiber. Two layers of fiber and a design layer. And now we're gonna do what's called wetting out. For the wet out stage, we like to use our mesh fabric. It's very easy to wet through. And then our soap here is getting our water all cloudy, which is just perfect. And I forgot my parking, here's my parking spot for it. I don't leave my soap in my water. You don't really need to, but I do like to use it by hand. So the first thing we're gonna do is wet out with our ball bras. You don't have to have a ball bras. Um, it's a luxury item, really. I used my hands in a ladle for so long, but what it does is it allows you to wet a large area of the project at once and kind of uniformly. And then I press the water in with my, my hand. So I take my, my sponge, it's loaded with water. I load it with soap and then I'm going to press, usually from the middle, out. We're pressing water and soap in and air out. We had a couple questions about our soap. Does it have a scent? The olive oil soap has a natural, uh, a natural scent as a result of the uh, olive oil that is used in it. So it does not, it's not scented. I'm very sensitive to scents. Um, and so it's not, there's no added scent, but it is the normal scent of the, it is the normal scent of the olive. It is the normal scent of the olive oil soap. So you're going to add soap and water. You're going to add the soap and the water all at once, and you're going to press your hands, press, 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 all across your project. The first thing we're doing is just wetting. If you see an area where it looks dry, then just pat it down. Just pat it down. What you want it to be solidly wet before you start rubbing. Now, one thing about this olive oil soap, other than dish soap, some people use dish soap, but that is too sudsy. And a lot of dish soaps have uh, agents in them that actually eat organic matter. So you definitely don't really want that in your project. Once it's all wet and everything is nice and flat, you know, it's all the way wet all the way through. You've got soap all the way through. We are going to gently, gently, gently rub. We're only rubbing the surface layer. See how this could even move on my bubble? We don't wanna rub all the way through, but your hand should be wet and glide across the project. So I'm not rubbing through to the bottom layers. I'm just forming a surface skin. 
This mesh is a barrier between your hands and the wet wool so that the wool stays together and your hands don't stick to it. While you're working with it, I want you to peel it back often and make sure that it, nothing is sticking to your mesh. In the beginning, it may. So just use your fingers like I'm doing, peel it back. If you're using hankies, expect it to stick. So what we wanna do is, in the beginning, we're gonna go a little slow because we want all these fibers to bind with each other and lay down. So lay it back down and then just rub a little bit with your hands. If any fibers pill up through the mesh, don't worry about them. They're just those top loose ones. But if it persists, then just back off your pressure. Initially, the, I must have got grabbed onto it when I peeled it back. Initially, the mesh just allows the water and soap to pass through and hold everything together. And then we replace it with the plastic when we get to the rolling and a little more felting. So hand rubbing is always the first stage. And you wanna kind of rub it evenly. Don't worry about where everything trails out on the edges, we're gonna come back to that. Okay, peel back your mesh. Like I said, it's just peel back your mesh often and notice how everything is laying down, nothing is sticking, it looks great. Okay, you can replace this with your second piece of plastic at this point or you could keep it on a little bit longer if you are if you're more comfortable, but if you put your second piece of plastic down, especially if you're brand new, what's gonna happen is you will not, I'm gonna straighten my plastic out underneath here, you will not be pilling any fiber through the mesh. So this is just like a little more of a guarantee that everything goes smoothly. When you put a top piece of plastic down, you gotta wet the top because otherwise it's gross. <laughs> you gotta put water on the top so that your hands glide across it. So put water on the top and put soap on your hands. And now we're gonna rub through to the bubble. So you don't want this, you don't want this to group in on itself. Rub evenly. So I like to sort of go rub down, rub up. Rub side to side, rub upsy downsies. I like to go over the whole project a couple of times so that I know everything is just kind of getting really, really close together and starting to get chummy. <laughs> so we're getting all the air out and really starting to form a surface skin. Now you can leave your plastic down. You do not need to pull it up. You don't need to peel it back over and over right now. Now we wanna to get to the rolling phase. So the rolling phase, um, the thing I forgot to mention in the beginning is I like to use a, a, a closet pole. And some people uh, know this, I use a closet pole or a wooden dowel. And it's something you just gotta have. So go to the hardware store, go to the back section, or ask them where they have the dowels. This is a closet pole, you can tell because it's super thick and it's very hard. But even an inch and a half dowel will be your friend, or an inch dowel will be your friend. And what we do is we put it right on top. I like to put it right on the edge of my project here. So it's right on the top, and we're going to roll up this whole sandwich. And we can take our, re our little marker out. So we're gonna roll up the entire sandwich, and you wanna roll it up nice and tight. And I'll take our paper out now. You wanna roll it up nice and tight so that there's no crinkles and no wrinkles. And then I like to fold my towel all the way over and then tuck it under so that now we can roll. So we're going to roll one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to 25. One, two, three, four, 25. And then I give it a quarter turn on its axis and keep rolling. And can you use a pool noodle instead of a dowel, or is a dowel better? Yeah, um, you can use a pool noodle, but, so let me um, try and answer this question while I, while I try and count. Okay, Holly, count. <laughs> what? <laughs> Holly's got to count if I have to answer. Um, a dowel is a bigger girth. I mean, a, a pool noodle is a bigger girth. Since this project is so small and so little, I want it to roll over on itself a few times. 
A pool noodle is big. I would use it for a scarf. I would use it for a wearable. I would use it for something larger, maybe even a hat. But um, I would use that for a bigger project, and I like the dowel for the smaller project. This is also thin. There's nothing delicate in it. There's no nothing delicate, meaning like silk fabrics or multi-dimensional things that I'm worried about smashing. So it's going to happen a lot faster if I can make my rolls smaller. It's going to felt faster. So we're going to do this rock and roll of 25 counts up to 100. So I'm on my fourth one right now. Yeah. Good for your triceps if you're, <laughs> <laughs> if you're standing. Um, up to 100. When we felt, the wool shrinks in the direction we rub and in the direction we roll. So as such, we want to treat it evenly from all directions. So we unroll our packet. Don't worry that it gets a little cranked up right now. We unroll our packet and then we're going to, here's the, the magic of the two pieces of plastic. We leave our bubble wrap in the same direction and we just move this a quarter turn. So we're, now we're going to roll from this side. Somebody suggested using PVC pipe. If they... uh, PVC, the PVC is a little slippery, but you can use it. Um, yeah, you can use uh, PVC, but it is a little slipperier. Um, yeah, but you can use it. I just like wood. I don't know why. I just like working with wood. Yeah, and if you roll, you know, just by itself, then the wood tends to grip to it a little bit. So we're going to do this from all four edges of the top side, and then flip it over and do all four edges of the bottom side. And then we'll test to see how we're doing. I'm gonna see if I can get through. What, how are we doing on time? It's 20 till. Because I can jump to, I can jump to uh, a piece that we have ready to go and show you, you know, how to move forward on this. It does take a little bit of time, plan for this project to take about an hour to make. If you have all yourself set up, and especially if you have your fiber selected. For me, sometimes just fiber selection takes time and getting my workstation set up and stopping doing other things <laughs> takes time. Okay, do we have any questions, Holly? Uh, well, could you use a palm washboard? Uh, yeah, I'll show you the, the palm washboard. So you can felt with the palm washboard as your agitation. When we felt, there are different means of agitation. And I will tell you that if you're wanting to, you know, jump into this a little more, a little more, we have a free tutorial in our school, um, wellfeltingtutorials.com. We're gonna turn this once more. Um, and I go through the fundamentals of wet felting, and I think in that video I show you multiple tools. So you can use the palm washboard, but right now I'm really intent on treating this evenly. That means I'm going to roll from all my edges before I bring in the palm washboard. And the palm washboard is one of those luxury add-on items. Um, and did I bring one out? I have one in the sink room. Okay, um, uh, we'll, we'll grab it and I'll show you how, how you can use the palm washboard. Some people don't like to roll and so they like to use the palm washboard. I love rolling and I love the palm washboard. So I like both very much. This rocking and rolling works when you have a small project like this, something that um, isn't very thick and isn't very large. But you'll also notice that I'm always moving my hands like from the center out to the edges and then back again because you want your work to feel the pressure of your hands the entire way. And I confess that I've already lost count. <laughs> so just know that we're going to go 100 rocks and rolls in 25 time increments from each edge. I want to get through 100 so you can see the state of it after 100. Thank you, Holly. And it's not wrinkling or anything. Like you can see it, it's very, it stays very flat. The plastic really keeps it in place. Usually after the first hundred, I like to remove the bottom plastic. So we're on our last hundred here, Holly. We're on our last edge. We did have a question. Sure. I ran out about how many to 
refresh how many times you roll. Okay. Yep, I just said that. So okay, we're doing sorry. We're doing <laughs> we're doing 100 from each edge in increments of 25. So after every 25, what you see me do is this. Just give it a quarter turn and that allows a different part of the project to be laying down at a time. Okay? So a different a different part is always on the bottom, a different part is underneath my hands. Yeah. And um, what, uh, can you go over the plastic, or the layers? You have sure. My layers are the grippy mat, the towel, my um, model, whatever's my template, my guide, the bubble wrap, and then plastic. My project, I started with the mesh then on top of that, and then I replaced the mesh with a second piece of plastic. So we basically have a plastic sandwich with our project in the middle, and the bubble wrap is like our work surface. Now, we have been giving this a quarter turn, and we're back to where we started. Let's peel this in, maybe. Let's, uh, oh, I'm gonna go in a little bit so y'all can see it a little bit better. And we have the plastic available on our website, correct? We do, we have this thin plastic sheeting, and it's also in the little starter kit. Okay, look, this is so pretty. I'm so excited now. These are some of my favorite colors together. Orange, this, anything that's like orange and pink. So this is looking pretty nice. And what we can do is get in here as you're working and you can look and see how is everything staying together. Sometimes people say, oh, the naps aren't sticking. Why aren't they felting? The viscose isn't sticking. And you can see that I've done nothing special. You can see that I'm rubbing this. The fibers are pretty much staying in place. They look pretty good, but we have a very, very delicate felt happening here. This is very fragile still at this point. So one of the things I like to do is remove the bottom plastic. And the reason is I remove the bottom plastic is I feel like, um, I kind of feel like the two layers of plastic, if kept into place, kind of hold the project at the dimension that I have it. So I like to, let it be a little free to move around on the bubble wrap and then I still keep this on top to protect it. But I want to feel a little bit of soap. I like to feel a little bit of soap on top of this. I like to feel like I can um, felt it with my hands. So I'm going to get my hands nice and soapy. You want to be very delicate here. You could definitely rough up the fibers with the, our, our hands can be very aggressive when the fiber is still delicate and it might take you a little while to learn how gentle to be. So I would say, be as gentle as if you were rubbing you know, lotion on a baby's back. Be very, very, very gentle here. And now we can uh, put our plastic back into place. You can flip this thing over and felt it from the other side if, uh, and keep rolling. I like to rub through the plastic. And now I'll go ahead and do my, I'll do some circles. I'll be a little more, let's see if this will go out a little bit. I'll be a little more aggressive at this point, but we're still felting. We're still felting. We're creating a soft felt. So manage your directions, go in different directions. You can felt with your hand like this through the bubble. And from the pieces that I shared with you earlier, I did not use the palm washboard, but you can use the palm washboard in the same manner. And that is wet plastic, use the palm washboard, to guide across your piece. I'm not using any pressure, really. The palm washboard has weight all, all on its own. But what you wanna do is do circles, do upsy downsies and lefty rightsies. So the palm washboard can substitute for rolling completely, but you do want your project to be wet and soaked all the way through. So a palm washboard, it's got this nice wobble texture. It's made by a lovely couple here in the States. And um, we do carry this in the shop. If you like, it's a luxury item. You don't have to have it, but if you want one, grab one. Okay, so to move from here, what we have to do is keep doing the same process. Keep rubbing, keep rolling. I would flip the whole project over and then roll from the back. We won't get all of that done in this hour, so I wanna jump you to what we call um, the pinch test. So just hear my instruction for the moment. You're going to do everything that you did on the front from the back. Roll it 100 times in each 
direction, and then we're going to do a pinch test. Um, let's call this a pinch test. You're going to felt your project until you know that it is. Um, until you know that it is felted. So how do you know that it's felted? Let's go ahead. How do you know when your project is felted? We do what we call a pinch test. And a pinch test tells us whether the fibers are all sticking together, whether they're gonna come apart on us, um, and whether it's coming up as one fabric. So bear with me as I get my soapy plastic project out of the way, and I'll get, uh, I'll get another piece of plastic. I'll just get a, a plastic hold in here. You gonna take that one? Yeah. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> okay. I have a piece here that's already, um, that has reached the stage and I wanna show you what you are looking for when we do a pinch test. The pinch test, while you're felting, you wanna know that you have a nice piece of fabric. In this case, we're not gonna full our fabric to the, end, to the end of the earth, but what we are going to do is a nice pinch here so that the, the fabric is tenting up. And I'm gonna see if I have this on my, um, let's see if we can see this over here. Can y'all see? So a pinch test, we can pinch the fabric and it's going to kind of tent up like this and keep its shape. It also means that when I pinch, the fibers are not coming loose. I know that this is all one piece of fabric. So in the pinch test, the fibers aren't coming loose and the fabric will tent up so that you know it's all become one piece. When that happens, when you know that you have this, you can take it further, which is called fulling, um, if you want, and you can also stop when you're happy with it. Fulling is the next stage of felting where we actually do more agitation. You still have the soap and water in the project and we full by, usually I would still have my, uh, my bubble wrap here, but I surrendered it, no worries. I'm gonna just use the, um, I'm gonna use the bamboo mat, I guess. I'm gonna use the bamboo mat just so you can see. The bamboo mat can be used in place of the bubble wrap. Um, as, as far as a work surface or even a rolling surface. The only key with a bamboo mat is you want your project to fit inside of it so that the teeth, the teeth or the edges of the bamboo doesn't eat it up. So when we full our project, you can fold it, you can manipulate it. What we're doing is we're rolling it more and more. You can be more aggressive, uh, but you don't necessarily have to be. But we, when we're fulling, we are further shrinking the fiber. Fulling, uh, some people use the term felting when they throw their knitting in the washing machine, but really that's fulling, and that is further getting the fibers to shrink together. So there's various methods for fulling, and we go over a lot of these in our uh, wet felting uh, fundamentals video, but basically it's further agitation. So now I'm just rolling and I'm really pressing, you can do what I call wadding. I don't know if there's a technical term. I've always called this wadding. Wadding, wadding, you're kind of, this really gets the fibers like all giddy. They just, <laughs> they tend to get their kink back when you do wadding. You can wad it up like this and roll it. You don't wanna do this too soon because if you do it too early, then your fiber is gonna get very fuzzy. And if you want to really control the shrinkage the entire time and keep it very, very straight, then keep pulling it straight and don't do a lot of wadding and don't do throwing. Throwing is this. Throwing is when we throw it. Throwing, some people don't do this, they call it shocking the fibers, but throwing, you're kind of like jolting the fibers together. So if you wanna really control your shrinkage, don't do this, but if you're just wanting to full it, so. Fulling is after you know you have a felt and then we're further shrinking the fabric. The more you full, the more dense that fabric is going to become. The closer the fibers are gonna to get together, it's gonna to get smaller. Sometimes when we full, we're going for a particular shrinkage rate. Like if we're felting a purse or a hat or a bag or something we wanna be very durable, you might hear us say, go for a 30% shrinkage or even a 40% shrinkage. And that's because we know that the fabric gets very strong when you do that. Um, this piece was made on, this piece I wasn't worried about too, too much uh, shrinkage. I really just want that thin felt fabric, but this is a visual of how it started. 
So if you're going from corner to corner, um, it didn't really shrink all that much. I could absolutely fold this more and get more shrinkage. Let's see what it, what it did come down to. Is there a size they should be aiming for no, for the coming projects? I, I just want to see at least, so this is going from, uh, we went from, we went from 15 inches to 12 inches, and that is what I was going for. This is a, this side's only 11, though, so this one I got more shrinkage. If you want more shrinkage, if this one's 11 and you want this one 11, then roll it more in this direction. So, you know, have at least 11 inches available uh, so that you get more out of the fiber, and anywhere you want it to shrink more, then roll it more in that direction. You can also roll wide on your towel if you want. If you have an, an area that's going in and you want it out, pull it out now. If you have a corner that you want to shrink in, we call this spot fulling, well then just roll that corner, pinch it, and then press and roll. And it will go start to go in for you and do more of what you want. So let's take this wonky corner here. We can pull this out. And wherever you want it to shrink, like if this feels like it's a little pokey outy, we'll just take that, pinch, 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 roll. I'm really pressing into my bubble and it'll straighten up for you. So that's called spot fulling. Now we don't need this to be perfect, but I want you to get the most you can out of, um, out of this fabric. And then once you're all done, like you're happy with your felt fabric, you want to, um, uh, vinegar, maybe call it vinegar, the v vinegar. You want to rinse your project completely, uh, like just through the tap. And you want to rinse your project completely, just run it under the tap until all the soap runs out. And then you want to soak it in a vinegar bath for about 15 minutes. I literally just do that, a couple of glugs. And then you want to put your project in water. I usually do that while I clean up my workstation. Um, I know that some people, like in the UK, it's harder for you to get this vinegar than it is for us. This is a standard household 5% uh, white vinegar. Don't get the other vinegar, it's too stinky. So <laughs> white percent, or five white vinegar, get the generic stuff, it's cheaper. It, it doesn't even matter. So while you're cleaning up, just soak your project. And that's what I do is I soak it for like 15 minutes. Then, once you've soaked it for 15 minutes, bring all the water out, and we're gonna steam press it. Steam press it is gonna give your felt a very nice, well, you don't even really have to add water for the steam pressing part. The steam press is gonna give your felt a very nice finish. And if you're concerned about anything, then put a pressing cloth on top of it. So, you can iron right on top of these fibers. Just wait for a second for my uh, iron to heat up and yeah it's heating up you can iron right on top of these fibers if you have anything in there that you shouldn't iron on well then that's when you want to use a pressing cloth it's just starting to heat up right now just take a second so you can set it to dry overnight steam pressing it is going to give it a really smooth professional looking finish and usually I roll it in a towel first to you know get more of the water out what you'll notice is that tomorrow when you come back to the piece or hours later is that all the viscose and all of the tussis silk and all of that lovely bling fiber that you put on there is going to have a really nice sheen but you won't see that until the next day it it takes a little time we have a couple questions about what sure. setting your iron is oh on. i have my iron all the way up i just put it on the hottest setting but if you're worried about burning anything just put it on the wool and the silk setting you don't really want to get your silk fibers too hot because it kind of dulls them, uh, but I don't stay on there very long and you can iron from the back as well. You can just put it on the wool setting. And you did, did you, you did not rinse the vinegar out? Before. I didn't, you didn't see me do it, but just rinse the vinegar okay. out if you want. Yeah, I just give it one final rinse. In fact, I really like to go from a vinegar bath to like a water lavender bath so that it smells a little bit like that. But just give it a steam press and then let it, let it set overnight. We won't be able to get it um, dry right now, but here is what it looks like at the moment. All pressed and all smooth. And notice that it's not bubbly or puckery. So I was going for a very fine, smooth finish and a very nice, 
thin, really notice how drapey it is, even wet right now. You can see how drapey and thin it is, and that's what we're going for. Here's a cousin. Uh, this piece is only a tenth of an ounce more. They came out to be practically <laughs> the same size. I, I laid them both out on my 15 by 15, and I'll finish felting the one I started with you. Um, so they came out to be the same. They're almost the same size, and they're the same weight. Uh, so these are paper, paper thin. And just to give you some perspective, these are from our Artful Felt Fabric Lessons where we used a full pre-felt. And you can see on the back here, this is one type of pre-felt. This is the PFL. This is a full thickness of the PFM. And this is silk gauze or silk chiffon, silk gauze as a base layer. And then we put more fiber on top. These pieces each weigh about as much as these pieces. So notice they're smaller, but they weigh about the same um, and they're more dense. So we've used this denser fabric in other projects and for what we're doing next week, we really want the thinner fabric. So go for the thin layout, go for a 15 by 15 inch layout with about one ounce of fiber and try not to put down more. And that's total fiber, merino top or and or the um, pre-felt base and um, the, the embellishment fibers. On the back of each of mine, I used an entire half thickness of pre-felt on each of these. And then I'll finish the one that I made with you um, today and we'll use that next time so you can see how, what the weight came out to be, and I'll finish felting and tell you what the dimensions are. Yeah. Everybody loves your, your was it glug? Did you glug, My glug. your measurement? Oh, yeah, just glug it. <laughs> We're going to need a Marie Gloss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I know. like it. <laughs> I, ha I have friends of mine who do the same. They're like, just glug. I'm like, do you measure? I mean, I read some people's instructions, two tablespoons to one, you know, we just glug it in there. You really, the point, the purpose of the vinegar is, it helps break down any residual soap. That's important because soap over time will break down your fibers. They have a completely different pH. The wool prefers to be more acidic and the soap prefers to be more basic. So the vinegar helps break down that soap because the basic qualities of the soap would break down your fibers over time. Um, and also it just brings the fiber back to its more natural acidic state which it likes to be around a seven I think. So that's the purpose of the vinegar rinse. Yeah. So we just had a couple of maybe a little reminders about the activity packs that yes. they can get them. Oh, yes, um, yes, yes. They're to asking tell about colors and how okay. much fiber they need. Okay, so the activity packs, my, and mine's a mess now, but the activity packs um, that are on the site, we have just three right now because we want to see how you all like them. So if you like them, let us know. But we have Love Notes, which is what I use today. We have a Hot Tones variety and a Cool Tones variety. So the Hot Tones are, are really nice and warm and um, the Cool Tones are like blues, purple, and a little bit of light green. Um, and so each of these only weighs one ounce in total. So I used an eighth of a pre-felt, split the thickness, um, and split all of my fibers in half. Um, yeah, so we just weigh your fibers in advance. Get yourself a little kitchen scale. Does that answer it? Those are under, you'll find those listed, um, I think they're under the specialty designer packs, but you can also just follow the link for the supplies for today's show, and they're going to be right on that page. Yeah, mm -hmm. that answers that. And then we had a little bit of, uh, just if you could clarify that the wool felt, the wool felt sheets are different than the pre-felt. Okay, yes. So wool felt, we have wool felt sheets and it's listed on our website under felt. And that is fiber that's already been felted. Our wool felt sheets are commercially processed and they are like craft felt that you could cut and glue and sew. So they're hundred percent felted. Now, I'll tell you the truth, if you throw those in the washing machine, you're going to get about 10% more shrinkage on them. So if you want them to be more dense, you could wet felt them. You could needle felt to them and then wet felt that, but the shrinkage is going to be off because, right, the fresh fibers are going to sh want to shrink more and the felt fabric will not. So felt fabric is really for needle felting onto or stitching with, sewing with. And pre-felt is unfelted fiber that has been prepared into sort of a fabric with a needle punch process. It's very delicate. It's unfelted. It's ready to be felted. So think of it as like buying um, 
cookies pre-made, that's the felt, or cookie dough ready for you, not cookie, just pre-made cookie dough. PF, the pre-felt is pre-made cookie dough and the felt is the cookies. <laughs> Tell where my mind's at today. Right. One last little quick question. Yeah. A lavender bath. What do you... Oh, I just use thank you. So I just love the smell of lavender and lavender repels moths of any kind. So um, that's good for your, your, you know, your handmade felt. So what I do is just a, a similar bowl of water, just like I put my vinegar in. And then I just put, you know, like 10 drops of essential oil of lavender in there. So right after the vinegar bath, I soak it in there. Then I roll my project in a towel, get the water out, and then I iron it and let it sit overnight and all the glory will be out tomorrow. <laughs> all the sheen will be there for you. Anything else? How do we do? It's three o'clock. You, you guys did really good. Have some prizes, right? Good. Yeah. So we're going to give away some prizes. I hope this was, was helpful. I want to tell you that um, we do have, we do have a wet felting playlist and we also have a fundamentals of wet felting. Come on in Holly on our, in our school, which is absolutely free. And we have some great sales going on in the school right now. Um, but the fundamentals of wet felting is free and we have some other wet felting lessons. So if this is, you know, too baby for you, then rock on and do something else. But if this is your first, make a thin piece of fabric for next week. You can, you know, two clicks and you have all the supplies almost that I used today, right? And um, we're going to do something fun, don't you think, the next project? Yeah, project? I'm excited. Yeah. I'm oh. going to go home and felt tomorrow, especially if we're snowed in. Oh, yeah. Or we, iced oh, yeah. in or whatever. So we might be closed tomorrow, 99% chance to be closed tomorrow because we're going to get, like, too much ice for Texas roads. We don't have road treatment out here. So we'll probably be closed tomorrow. We plan to reopen Friday, and, of course, we'll be here Saturday. And then next week, my dear, dear friend, Don Edwards, is going to be here from Michigan. So I'm sure coming to <laughs> balmy 50-degree right. Texas will be a relief. She's coming here. We're working on some very special projects, but in the middle of this of a week of a blizzard of felting, we are going to have a fun Wooly Wednesday where we'll, we'll use our thin uh, felt fabric with you all and do something great. So I can't wait to see Dawn and for you to see her again or meet her if you're new. All right. I've gone on long enough. Okay. <laughs> so we have some prizes and we yeah. are giving away either the well, felting starter set. Right. The tool set. The tool set or an acti activity Pack, pack of your choice yeah so we're going to draw two names right now and if we didn't answer your question and if we don't uh didn't holler out your comment if we you don't win uh <laughs> if um you, we didn't answer your question comment down below because you get another chance to win okay oh fun oh, we have two lindas today it looks oh, like linda whiting and linda wanser we're up we're up we're up, up. here linda whiting <laughs> and linda wanser congratulations gals and thank you so much for playing with us today i can't wait to see your thin, artful felt fabric between now and next week. Make sure you share them in our group, uh, Living Felt Friends. And if you make it, oh, please, please, please tag us because that's what me and Holly, please. yeah, <laughs> we jose on seeing what you make and then you might even get published in the newsletter. Uh -huh. You might. <laughs> so until next week, y'all, just be very, very kind to yourselves. Stay warm, stay safe, and go felt stuff. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thank you.